Hi everyone, and welcome to this tutorial bite for Oxygen Not Included, which is a quick and comprehensive guide to pipes and mechanics. Whilst this may not be the most glamorous topic, it is extremely important to understand these when creating piping systems of any kind. This tutorial will use pipes to demonstrate these mechanics, the conveyor rails for solids behave in a similar way. I will also cover solid shipping in its own tutorial bite. Jumping right in, pipes are filled with pumps, and two gas pumps are required to fill a gas pipe to the maximum 1 kilo per second. One liquid pump is required to fill the liquid pipe to its maximum of 10 kg per second. Pipes flow from green to white, and each pipe segment can only flow fluids in one direction. There are a couple of key buildings you can use to control pipe flows, and I'll quickly run through these. Starting with bridges, these are primarily used to cross over pipe runs without merging the contents. They also have an important role for prioritising flow, which I will cover shortly. Next, the shutoff requires a small amount of power and takes an automation signal to open or close it. This is useful for stopping and starting flow, or for choosing which pipes receive the packets through sensors. The valve controls the flow rate, limiting it between zero and the maximum pipe capacity. Note that when the value is changed, a dupe needs to do a switching task, so it must be accessible. This can be used to prevent packets sitting in pipes, or for precise input control. Limiting flow also has another benefit, as packets equal to or less than a tenth of the pipe capacity will not change state. This is 100 grams per second for gases, and 1 kilogram per second for liquids. As you might imagine, this can be used for highly effective heat transfer without breaking pipes, and is commonly used in more advanced builds. The filter building requires power and will filter out the selected material to the orange pore. All other outputs will continue out of the green pore. I am also showing here what is commonly referred to as a low power filter, which uses a shutoff connected to a pipe element sensor to achieve the same effect for significantly less power. Beware with these that if the filtered output backs up, then all the packets will continue on, rather than wait as they will do in the filter building. Of course, the simplest way to filter is to ensure that inputs can only be of one type in the first place, wherever this is possible. Meter valves will count out a specified amount of material and then shut off. At this point, they send out a green automation signal and then require an automation input to reset the counter. At this point, they then start counting again. These can be used to send through precisely measured amounts of material. Splitting and joining pipes is important to understand to plan larger systems. When pipes split, the flow is split equally between the pipes, and this can be done in two, three or four directions, with four requiring a bridge. When pipes join, the packets will merge if they're the same material and there's enough space in the pipe. If they're of different materials, or there isn't enough space, then they will merge in turn. Bridges are used to prioritise splitting and joining. If a pipe splits in two through a bridge input, then the priority will always be with the bridge, if there's room in the pipes. This makes the other pipe an overflow, and this is very useful for controlling systems. A common example is the infinite bathroom loop, and in this case, the bridge would top up the toilet inputs, ensuring they're full, and any excess would continue down the other pipe to be processed elsewhere. Bathrooms will also be covered in their own tutorial bite. Conversely, if a pipe is joined onto using a bridge, the priority will remain with the pipe. This means that the bridged in pipe can be used as a top up, for example from a reserve storage. Note that both of these bridge priority behaviours apply to any building with a piped input and output, and this commonly includes the shutoffs and valves. The final pipe behaviour to point out is that packets will continue to flow from an output to an input. This means it is possible to make a continuous loop which requires no power, as long as there is at least one bridge in the loop. These are extremely useful in making cooling or heating loops, both of which I will cover in their own tutorial bytes. Note that it is recommended to fill these loops by bridging on, as this will stop the loop from clogging up. If the loop does clog, simply empty out a couple of the pipe segments until the flow resumes. You can use a dupe with a plumbing skill and the pipe emptying command, or by deconstructing and rebuilding the pipes. So that's all there is to cover about pipe mechanics and oxygen not included. I hope you found this useful, and thanks for watching.